Hi and welcome, I'm Angela. So today's uh, live, I'm doing on a teaching again from Sri Bhagwan. And if you're interested in finding out more about his work, just send me a message in the chat. Uh, but one of the teachings that he's shared just recently was respecting the need of uh, uh, the other is love. So in lighting of um, some of the things that have been going on in the world recently about people coming from fear, uh, some of the hate that's going around the world, I wanted to look at uh, love relationships in terms of how do we get to a deeper connection to another person and how do we go beyond relationships that perhaps don't allow a conflict or allowed differences of opinion because if you if you've grown up in a family which most people have there's always conflict conflicts in families conflict is is a part of what families do by na the nature of families conflicts is a part of what families do they they have conflict as a way to resolve you, you may have grown up in a, a great family but at some point you're dealing with conflict and some families deal with more conflict than other families. So families are a place where you can learn how to resolve conflict. Now, one of the situations we're facing at the moment is that a lot of families um, are separated through many, many circumstances, through immigration. Global immigration is higher than it's ever been in our civilization. We started off as a human tribe and we were together. We were tight and we had small communities. The world's exploded. So you can probably think of many other factors where people are separated. We're in industrial culture now. Uh, kids are work, going to school far from the home. Parents are working far from the home. Parents are, are separated. Children live in different homes. Uh, people are isolated in in certain living arrangements, they might be far away from grandparents or different countries. So separation is big in our culture now and it creates the ability to deal with conflict now. It's something we kind of go, oh yeah, I'll get to that at some family gathering in the future or it just doesn't get attended to in the family, right? So an individual can be raised in a family very isolated and if you think about technology, Bang, another form of separation and isolation that, that gives us the potential to be basically left with a lot of emotions, whether it's a child or an adult. You can be left with a lot of emotions unattended and you think that's normal. I mean, when I grew up in the 70s, we had TV and a lot of parents went to work and kids were left home alone. And you know the movie Home Alone, one, two, three, and how many there are. That was a, a feature of that modern, um, modern society way of parenting. But now even adults can be in the same room on a phone and you're isolated, you're separated. We're, we're developing habits, physical body habits, with the way we relate with each other's bodies in a room that just never existed on the planet before. Okay, So it, the ability to deal with emotion and what I started with originally I talked about how do we deal with conflict whether it's internal conflict whether you're feeling bad in a relationship or maybe something happened two three years ago and you didn't know at the time that it upset you but suddenly you're having an emotional reaction and you're thinking where is this coming from Families are breeding grounds for unresolved hurts and feelings. Not intentionally. That's just how they are. That's just how emotions get unrecognized or un misunderstood or literally just abandoned. And then years later, they can come back. So as a consequence now through more actual physical separation, we're, we're learning habits of misunderstanding and just brushing things under the carpet. Is it's becoming a way of life as, as life gets more and more busy and more and more uh, full. Full and full of expectations of how you should be, 
what you should be doing and where you need to be in order to keep up with perhaps your expenses or keep up with the demands of a modern life. So families have a really strong challenge these days to bring quality back into their relationships. However, I would invite you to consider that it's, it's a potential opportunity as well. If you live separately from your family, I'm going to share today a simple strategy to connect. It's just this imagination piece and it's connecting to heart. And if you can check out the link in the description, you can also see in the description there's a, a four-part process I have for the art of loving relationships, the art of making relationships thrive. And in that I talk about connecting to heart. So one of the things to, to consider, why, why don't we connect to heart? Why don't we immediately understand? Why don't we respect people in relationships? Why don't we understand the need of the other in a relationship? Because as a habit, and it's a cultural habit, that perhaps has gone on for a long, long time. When emotions or conflict has come up in relationships, in family or in partnership or in communities, we tend to not be able to address it. We get emotional. We get embarrassed because we're emotional. And we don't know how to talk about the emotion. And we brush things under the carpet. And now that we live in more distant relationships with our families or within our communities, somebody can be isolated and far away from friends. They tend to get forgotten and we don't reconnect, we don't reach out. And that's a habit we've formed through technology. So respecting the need of the other. How do you actually get respect the need of the other? If you've had a bad habit, and I'm not saying you personally, I'm saying us culturally, we have bad habits culturally of not addressing our negative emotions or our feelings of discomfort in relationship or our feelings of being less. If you feel less in a relationship, the habit is to not talk about it, especially if you feel less or if you feel like you're in opposition to someone in your family or in your relationships, you don't want to talk about it because you're sort of saying to them, I'm feeling vulnerable and I feel like perhaps you don't like me or you don't want me. So we've got a habit of not talking about those hurts in relationship because we don't want to express that we feel vulnerable, we might feel less, and we might have a fear of losing that person or upsetting that person. Or, and this is another fear I've noticed, in relationships, especially when you're younger, if we bring our discomfort to a parent or to a sibling or to a friend, we actually fear they might um, judge us as criticising them. And we don't want to come across as criticising because we want to be their friend. We want to, want to keep their love. We fear saying something to someone in case they think we're going to think that they're feeling attacked. So what we see when we don't deal with emotions in relationship is that all negative emotions, when a person's left with those negative emotions by themselves isolated, that results in a lot of unrequited love. It, you feel you can't get love. You feel you're not enough. You'll never be enough. You feel very little. You feel small. You feel inadequate. And you're going to find people that validate that, that say, you are right to be angry. You are right to feel small. And these people, not you, these other people are making you feel small. And that's not what you should be doing. And thereby, some people who are isolated can end up with hate groups or people that validate a sense of power that they feel they don't have. Other people don't respond that way. But I think when we're looking at why is there hate, why is there isolation in the world, we need, if we wish to change that, we need to look at why and how. Why is very helpful. Why do we respond from a place of lack? Because we've built, we've built up habits for the last 300, 400 years from the, the other industrial revolution. We're in another one now. But we've built up habits of isolating people and we're, we're losing or uh, lessening the value of communicating about emotions and we've built up habits of avoidance of talking about those emotions 
people go into fear and instead of talking they isolate and suppress those fears and then it comes out through many other destructive ways where they may form hate groups or other people just form groups where they feel they can validate victims being a victim or we may just isolate from our family relationships and our friends or, and we start to feel like our friends or our family members don't understand us. That's the more passive, um, easygoing type manifestation I see. So I'm going to address the, the one area where I see in love relationships, family relationships and, and romantic relationships where we typically have built up a habit of just sort of not respecting the need of the other from avoidance. We don't, we don't set out our, our love relationships to go into this relationship going, yeah, I want this per person to just accept me the way I am and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand them and I know what they want and I get exactly who they are. When you start a love relationship, you open to the fact you know nothing about this person. You know nothing, okay? The, the mystery to me is somehow, somewhere along the line of relating to that person, you go, well, I know how they are. You know how they are. You talk, talk about a family member to other family members about, well, you know what they're like. They always do this. They're like this. We, we somehow in the beginning, we do see people as a mystery. Well, in a love relationship or a parent-child relationship. Then after a while, we start to develop these assumptions that people are this way, they're fixed. It's very um, isolating behaviour. Because in that moment when we do that, what we're doing is we're sort of condemning the person as well as sort of fixing them in our mind and we're relating to them in our mind. And it's, it shuts down understanding the need of that person or just even opening up to the mystery of them, what they could be, or what could be going on underneath for them. Maybe there's a hurt there. Maybe there's a, a struggle they have. Maybe there's a complex side to the person that you have no understanding of, which I've experienced in my family, so I've been blessed to really have struggle with understanding some of my members. But when I opened to the mystery of them, I became fascinated and that it led to understanding. It took a long time, but the journey was so incredible. And this is what I see is lacking in a lot of love relationships. We're not interested in people. We are at the beginning of a love romantic relationship. Oh, I don't know anything about them. Then about a, after about six months, we start developing these very fixed uh, ideas. Then we get upset because the person is responding that way. And then we sort of react to this idea of the person. And then we justify it by their behaviours. Instead of actually going into, well, hang on, why? Why are they acting this way? Where is that coming from? Not from a place of getting them to understand you, but from a place of wanting to understand them and how they trigger you. Susan's just mentioned consistent curiosity. And consistent curiosity... Thank you, Susan. Consistent curiosity, behind it is your intent. So if you want to add, Susan, what's your intent behind consistent curiosity in that other person? I'd love to hear. Because if you have this intent to really just go, wow, what is that person's need? And why am I upset by it? What, what does it bring out of me? What does it confront me with? What does it challenge me with? Why does it hurt me if it hurts you? Oh, why does it confuse you? I know in my family, I got confusion and anger. So I had this opportunity to understand why I was confused, what I was really looking for, because I didn't have a strong, clear sense of myself. That's why I was confused. But my anger was the key one. And I was angry because I didn't feel a sense of myself being validated in the family relationship. Now, once I got to that seminal point, of understanding that I was being triggered by the family member, that I wasn't getting a sense of myself validated, that didn't mean suddenly all of my relationships became this magical paradise. It meant I had something to work with and build respect on. 
It's so every time I got triggered in the family situation, I could go, oh, that's there's my sense of validation not being respected. That's my feeling, right? And then I actually saw how that family member sometimes also had the same need of being validated as myself. So that forced me once I got to the understanding of myself. It's not like that's a finite finish. It's, a, it's as Susan's suggesting, like a constant, consistent curiosity, an ex exploration that never ends until, <laughs> in my line of work, it doesn't even end once you die because we still carry energies on the other side. But in this life, to think that the arrogance you can actually finish understanding yourself is very minimising of the human nature and condition and the journey of being here on this earth. We've got a lot of exploration of emotions and understanding of the self to do before you pass on. And even on the other side, it goes on. So in that moment where I got the understanding, it gave me a building block to then in every time I had a connection with the person to be curious and with the intent of wanting to understand their need, I got more and more relationship. The relationships became over time more playful, more organic and natural. So I wanted to read Susan's comment. Um, so Susan is saying her intent behind this consistent curiosity in the other. Why is this showing up? What is the lesson available? Where is the pain? And then she goes on. So there's many beautiful questions she's offering herself to explore in her understanding of the other. Is this what's coming up a reflection of something I avoid in myself? Is this an invitation to see something new? I follow my feelings by naming them and asking more questions. Thank you, Susan. That's wonderful. So once she's named the feelings, she can then explore, perhaps, why am I feeling this feeling? For me, it was the anger. So once I saw, as Susan's suggesting, a reflection, um, Susan saying something she's avoiding in myself, for me, it wasn't always avoiding in some relationships. In other relationships, it was actually understanding I had the same need. <laughs> Sometimes the need will be, um, not exactly the same. Sometimes it'll be a, a different need to you. So it's like a, a spectrum of needs that the whole group in a family, maybe, you all have different needs. Sometimes in a family you'll find siblings or parents and children or grandparents and children and parents that have a same need, a family need. So that's what I discovered. And in the need, say, say for my anger, the self-validation, I actually got to learn how each member in the family taught me something different about that same need we all shared. So family units can be fantastic for exploring how to go deeper into some consistent need you may have. And I invite you to look at if you've got siblings, you're blessed because they all probably have a little piece of your puzzle and some of them may annoy you very deeply or they may not. Uh, have a relationship with you so sometimes we want closeness but closeness will actually avoid you learning the deeper need of or what the lesson is and sometimes those family relationships unfortunately are not about a, a emotional or physical intimacy and that can be quite hard in a family but they can, I can guarantee you they're going to teach you the opposite, through often the opposite of your need as well. So they may deprive you of, in my case, it was self-validation. They may deprive you of that. And then you begin to go deeper. So the respect comes in the moment for me. I've been exploring that when I get triggered, I go into, like, like Susan saying, a, a deeper curiosity or questions. And my intent is the key. It's like I want to understand the need of this person and how it assists me in any way if I understand their need and then how I can respect it. Not expect them to be different. 
If they were going to be different, I wouldn't be having the relationship and I wouldn't be having the conflict and the opportunity that came from the conflict with them. So if you want to explore the, the four steps I have, check out the link below. The first step is openness. When we are in conflict or in feeling less or feeling hate or anger or fear that somehow we're not enough, it's very difficult to shift. I, I know that place. I grew up like that. So openness is the first step. You've got to open to just anything is possible. Anything. Change, a different way, anything. It's better than what you're experiencing now, basically. Openness is being open to anything else than what you are now. The second step is connecting to heart, which is harder for some people than others. And I have other tools to help if you're looking at connecting to heart work, I've got some other tools to help with that. And it's a practice. Connecting to heart takes time. So taking time to connect to your own heart will assist developing respect for the needs of others. The third step I share is feeling to understand. If we come from the mind, it wants to box people. Feeling after you've connected to your heart with the intent to understand the other or yourself opens up a whole new way of being and it's what I share in all of the work I do because feeling with the intent to understand changes the way you use your emotions you're not trying to understand where you're right or wrong because I did the, I'm a master at that too and it didn't get me very far it got me back to the same hole when I started feeling in order to understand and accept myself or the other person I began a whole new way of being free in myself and in my relationships. And then finally, the fourth piece is building respect on that understanding. Because if you just try to respect people, yeah, we've got to respect difference, and it sounds really plat platitudinal, and it's, it's good words, but without the heart to build the foundation on, it becomes empty words, and then unresolved hurts create bigger crimes and bigger... Uh, distance in relationships so that's the uh, basic four steps openness connect to heart feeling to understand and then building respect on the understanding of the other and their needs they're the four steps that I share in the, the free masterclass and you can use those as ways to reflect I've got some general questions there and if you're reading the sharing from Susan as well look at the questions Susan has as just ways to start questioning why is this happening? Why are you being triggered and what's being shown to you? So that's um, what I have to share today and tomorrow with Patty on building better relationships. We're looking at change. How can change inspire relationships? Because I think with a lot of our modern life, we're overwhelmed. But let's, let's look at it as an opportunity so Patty and I are going to share that in both work relationships and personal relationships. And I'll put a link in the uh, video as well. Thank you for joining. And I hope that your love relationships are opening up to, to exploring who you are and the other as well.